Welcome, Concrete Lovers, to part two of the ACI 211 Mixture Design Procedure. In this one, we're going to be talking about how to determine the binder content and also the air volume you needed in your concrete mixture. The binder content. That is the cementitious material. It's like the cement and the SCMs all mixed in together. To determine the binder content, you have to decide how much SCM you want, and you also need to know your water to cement ratio. Because remember, we've already determined our water content. So now we just need to know the water to cement ratio, and that'll help us get the cement content for some easy math. But in a concrete mixture, it's generally desirable to try to use as much SCM as practical. You could use a lot if it's the right stuff. The reason why is that they're typically less expensive than cement. They also improve the sustainability of your concrete mixture because SCMs are typically waste products from other industrial processes. But high dosages of SCMs can cause problems like delayed set time or slow strength gain and unwanted interactions with admixtures. So as discussed previously, the water cement ratio is determined by the strength and the durability requirements. If you don't remember, strength is determined by a three-point curve. What's that? Well, that's where you make mixtures with different water cement ratios and you plot a curve and you just pick off what kind of strength you need. You also need to know about the uh, variability of the test method, the standard deviation, and that helps you determine your over design. That's covered in a previous video. The durability is also very important. Another previous video. And it's based on the exposure conditions of your concrete. Once you have your water cement ratio, then all you need to do is some simple math to give you the right binder content. For example, you take the water you need, you divide by the water to cement ratio, and you end up getting the binder content. Now, you determine how much cement and SCM you need. You'll often see sometimes that things like fly ash are used at a percent replacement level of about maybe 20 to 30 percent, something like that. And you'll see things like slag which will be used at a percent replacement level up to about 50%. Things like silica fume, and this is actually a pretty expensive SCM, typically, you might see it at the most at about 5%. Those are the most common SCMs used inside concrete. So again, once you find your binder content, you're gonna find what percentage of it is going to be SCM. That's determined by either experience, you know by using this material what, what you can use, or it may be determined based on the durability that's required for the concrete. So you'll take your binder content multiplied by your percent replacement, one of these values. And then your cement content will be your binder content minus one, or times one minus the percent replacement for the SCM. This binder content is often discussed amongst concrete fiends in sacks, or sometimes they'll call them bags. But a sack is 94 pounds. So a lot of people talk about a five sack mix. It's like 470 pounds, six sack mix, it's 564, seven sack mix, 658. These are numbers that concrete super freaks just know off the top of their head. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. Now, we need to determine the volume of air inside the concrete. Now, these notes might look familiar because you've seen them before. This is the total air content that's required for freestyle resistance. And this is a table that talks about the maximum nominal aggregate size over here. And this tells you what kind of volume you need. This is for severe exposure or for moderate exposure. Most people just assume whatever exposure they're in is severe. Now, ACI um, does let you reduce the air content needed by 1% in, 
if your F prime C is greater than 5,000 PSI. The thought is that if your water cement ratio is low enough, you should be able to reduce the amount of air content you need. A lot of people ignore this though. A lot of people ignore this entire table and they'll just use something like 6%. They'll have a plus or minus on it, but 6% is what they'll design for. That's what most people require. Now these tables are based on some work by Paul Klieger, at PCA from 1952 and 54. And he did lots of really, really hard work, did some really neat things, but he didn't find anything like this table at all. It didn't even look like this. He said that you needed 18% air in the paste. But people have tried to simplify this. And they've assumed, based on the aggregate size, that that's going to increase or change your, 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 your paste content. I don't know if that's totally true, by the way. But this state... Um, the study also used only a limited amount of admixtures. They only used one air entraining admixture. That's no longer used anymore. And there's lots of improvements that can be made on this table and should be made for freestyle durability. But this is what people typically use to design the volume of air inside their concrete.